you don't take your frustration and anger and disappointment on the house of lords tonight fire levels the catholic church in fort chippewan alberta when you go to a school and say i'm here to teach you about species address uh it doesn't work what does work is the traditional knowledge of the Wikwemekon and Anishinaabek. And the latest in the Predator series of movies is Breaking Records. Good evening, I'm Dennis Ward. Welcome to APTN National News. The Prime Minister is in Cambridge Bay, Nunavut today. But the part that's drawing international attention is just who is visiting Nunavut with Trudeau. Prime Minister is joined in Cambridge Bay by NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg. And one of the things the two will be doing is visiting the North Warning Radar Station, which monitors the circumpolar north. The visit aligns with Operation Nanook, the annual Canadian military exercise in the Arctic, this is the first time NATO has sent a Secretary General to see Operation Nanook. One of the NATO's stated goals of the visit is to, quote, underline the high Norse strategic importance for Euro-Atlantic security. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau had this to say. As we face a changing world with new geopolitical threats, uh, strategically, the Arctic becomes more and more, more and more important, and yes, it's going to be important for us to keep investing in the science, keep investing uh, in defense, uh, to make sure that we are able to protect the Arctic and, by extension, North America and, indeed, NATO. But we can never forget that sovereignty doesn't come through soldiers or scientists. Sovereignty comes through the people who have lived here for millennia. Everything we do here has to be not just in support of them, but drawing on them for support of everything we do. To northern Alberta now, where a Catholic church has been destroyed in a fire that RCMP are calling suspicious. The church was a historic site for the Dene and Cree communities living in the hamlet of Fort Chippewan. APTN's Tamara Pimentel has that story. Church is on fire, completely destroyed. It was 3 a.m. on Thursday when Chief Alan Adam of the Athabasca Chippewan First Nation got the call. The Nativity of Blessed Virgin Church was engulfed in flames. Over a hundred years in history, gone up in flames. This was uncalled for. That church was very important. It was, you know, it was there for over a hundred years. It uh, had a significant history. Could it go closer? Chief Adam live streamed this video as fire crews struggled to battle the blaze. He says the flying community of Fort Chippewan is now down a fire truck because one of the few in the community flipped over on its way to the fire and is now out of commission. No injuries were reported, and RCMP say the cause of the fire is unknown, but it's being investigated as suspicious. Adam says while the relationship between Indigenous peoples and the Catholic Church is complicated, the loss of this church is a blow to the community. It was uncalled for. It was not un unnecessary to happen. You know, you don't take your frustration and anger and disappointment on the House of Lords, you know, and a lot of history went through there. A lot of our elders' memories that are in my head that uh, will only be there now because every time I walk or scroll across, there won't be a church standing there. So a lot of fond memories that are running through my head right now. Tamara Pimentel, APTN National News, Winnipeg. The church was on the site of the Holy Angels Residential School, where Chief Adams says a search for unmarked graves is being organized. To BC now where excitement over a great season for sockeye salmon has turned to disappointment. The US Canada Pacific Salmon Commission has dropped their preseason estimate of 9.8 million fish to 5.5 million. Hopes for a big sockeye run were high because this year is the peak of a four year cycle on the Fraser River. Fishers are concerned about healthy returns of sockeye salmon in BC waters. BC salmon stocks have been on the decline for decades, according to Fisheries and Oceans Canada. 
The U.S. allowed their sockeye fisheries to open this week while Canadian fisheries remain closed. Wick Wemakong unceded territory on Manitoulin Island in Ontario has become a lab for protecting species at risk. But it's also creating learning opportunities for researchers outside the community. Here's Annette Francis with that story. A black ash has between seven and nine leaflets, such as here. As versus a white ash, it only sometimes has five. Theodore Flamand knows this area like the back of his hand. For the past 18 years, he's been involved with a research project. He says it was a request from the elders. I think originally it started off like we didn't have information what was on the land. And uh, that was 18 years ago. Since then, they've managed to document and protect 14 species at risk, including wolves, snakes, and turtles in the oak savannas and wetlands. All the turtles are listed, which is the, uh, the blandings, painted, map, and the uh, snapper. So we have three of them here, and the one we have over our uh, sister reserve in Killarney. So we have four. Flamand says areas like this are more important now than ever. That's why for the past two years, it's been used as an outdoor education center. If you go to a school and say, I'm here to teach you about species at risk, uh, it doesn't work. Um, you may have their, their, their train of thought for maybe 15 minutes and that's it. So that's just something that this, the, the elders wanted was a setting like this where we could teach them about all the plants and that is here as well as species at risk. But, and we found in the last two years that it works, that they're more keen on species at risk now. He's hoping to share the knowledge with outside communities. That's why this group that's, that's has come from Guelph. Yeah, that's great like to do the nursery, nursery stuff yeah. right in yeah. the same spot where they're... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. They won't be me or Glenn <laughs> or George doing yeah. it. Yeah. It'll be a community thing. Like Justine like Richardson is the director of the Arboretum at the University of Guelph. It's such a biodiverse space and there are so many species that are only found here or are found here in, in numbers that really can sustain the populations and it's so important the work that they're doing here um, you know, for learning, for protection of the species, for learning, for training the next generation of young people to know and love and protect the natural world around us. She says the work they've done is amazing. We've seen so many things. Um, we caught a glimpse of a rattler, um, but didn't uh, didn't get to it. Uh, was too shy. Um, we were, of course, as an arboretum, we we're especially excited about plants, and we saw a Gattinger's agalinus, which is an endangered species with a beautiful little pink flower that's only found here. Uh, and we saw a lot of it yesterday in the spot where we went. We we went with um, with Theodore to uh, to an area where he is um, doing survey for Massasauga rattlers. According to Flamand, when the project is complete, there will be about 15 acres of protected areas on the reserve and a teaching area at the marsh. And at Francis APTN National News, Wukwamakong. Beautiful territory around there. We want to hear what you have to say about anything you've seen here. Here's how you can continue that conversation. You can send your emails to news at aptn.ca or leave a comment on our website, that's aptnnews.ca. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. Follow APTN News to join the conversation and see our latest stories. It's been a summer of smoke north of 60. More than half the communities in the Northwest Territories are under smoke advisories due to wildfires. 18 of the NWT's 33 communities are dealing with poor air quality. Smoke mapping shows fires near Wrigley and the Bacha along the, with multiple fires by the Alberta border, mostly to blame for the smoke. While there's still a month left of the regular fire season, this, this summer has proven to be one of the busiest for wildfire crews in the past five years. According to the Department of Environment and Natural Resources, 
almost twice the amount of land has been burned this year compared to a five-year average. 429,000 hectares have burned in the territory. That's uh, a little over the 419,000 uh, hectare 25-year average per season. And what we're seeing now is a season that's really continuing to go a few weeks after uh, we would normally expect to see activity die down. So obviously that puts a strain on uh, um, our personnel. Uh, it means that we uh, have had to extend people further than uh, they normally would, a number of our firefighters and, uh, and equipment. And, you know, a lot of that's just been driven by the fact that we've had a, we've had a very hot summer in the Northwest Territories, and that means dry forests and a lot of fuel that can burn really quickly. Rather quiet summer here in Manitoba. Time for another or our first quick break. Still to come though, a school in Listagooch is bringing learning back to the land. This is where my parents, my whole family taught me about outdoors. So anytime that I'm outdoor to show the kids, to show anybody, it's, it's a pretty well a blessing for me. Welcome back. School on the Listagooch First Nation in Quebec is bringing together centuries of traditional knowledge and marrying it together with cutting edge technology. Amelia Fournier has more about this new curriculum. Oh my <laughs> These Listagooch teens already graduated high school, but their outdoor education started this summer. I think it's important that people, like we learn about like what they had to do back in the day considering it was like, kind of taken from us from like the residential school and everything. If it's dry grass it'll burn once we have a flame but it won't ignite. Jonathan Barnaby and Travis Barnaby are from the Alagsid Gidbu School or AGS. They are teaching these students to start a fire and to shoot an arrow before they go off to university. I really enjoy coming to work every day and doing this kind of things with the with uh, students and working with uh, pretty excellent staff. This is where my parents, my whole family taught me about outdoors. So anytime that I'm outdoor to show the kids, to show anybody, it's, it's a pretty well a blessing for me. AGS goes up to grade eight, but the school also organizes outdoor education programs for adults who didn't get the chance to participate. Hey! When I was a kid, we didn't have any of this and I've never shot an arrow. I've never made a fire and I'm 18. so. I think it's good for kids to learn, especially my sister. She did it last year. Students learn all kinds of traditional Mi'kmaq skills. Perfect. You got it. A little bit more. No, you got it. That's a light. From tapping maple trees to snowshoeing to drum making. You name it, we've tried it. Anything that's happening in our community, we're trying to bring it into the classroom, trying to find a way to share that knowledge and, and to feel comfortable and confident in where they come from and their, their uh, Mi'kmaq identities. It's growing now. We got... We got Parker with us, so it's all the technology. So we have both the best worlds, I think, because technology and we have the outdoors. This setup here is for our 3D scanner. So this Ryan Parker is the STEAM educator for AGS. STEAM stands for science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. Parker works closely with the Mi'kmaq outdoor educators so the students can integrate technology with traditional teachings. We work in a team to uh, show that, uh, that two-eyed seeing, right? Like we're trying to blend both worlds because our students are going to have to walk in two worlds. Right? Place the mechanism wheel rollers. In AGS started the STEAM program last year. The program is meant to let students experiment with technology in a creative way. This is our creative media lab. AGS's lab and workshop has 3D printers, laser cutters, drones, a sound booth, and more. Parker is originally from the neighboring New Brunswick community of Campbellton, but he has been with AGS for 11 years. Really what we're trying to do is he, here is give them an opportunity to, be, uh, to, to try something new, and if they like it and they're passionate about it, to dig a little bit deeper, and it's hands-on, and these are transferable skills. The program is funded by the school, but Parker says that the program is looking to increase its own source funding by selling earrings and feather boxes made with the equipment. We buy it in pieces and we use a laser cutter to cut that out and then uh, put it onto the earrings. 
Parker says the STEAM program also looks to support land-based activities. The outdoor educator was doing his maple syrup lessons and tapping trees. He didn't have enough taps for the tree, so what we tried, uh, we got some students to design uh, taps. So 3D print the taps and see what would work. And really, that's what we want, right? And that thinking is is cross-curricular, but it's also uh, a way of that design thinking is what we want our students to do. We want them to try something, and if it, does, it fails or it doesn't work, we want them to try again. Now you're a little bit far. That trial and error approach is also used in outdoor ed, and students feel that they're taking part in Mi'kmaq culture by... Just keep everything alive, keep uh, showing other people, so it keep building off of other generations to other generations. Emilia Fournier, APTN National News, Les Sigush, Quebec. Crazy technology. When I was in high school, we had four computers in the whole school. Time for one more quick break. Coming up, have you seen the movie Prey? The latest in the Predator franchise is a smash hit. I can kill it. It knows how to hunt. I know how to survive. Welcome back. Time now for our photo of the day. APTN producer extraordinaire Bruce Spence sent in this picture from his holidays of what he described as a typical prairie thunderhead cloud formation near the beautiful region of Moose Min, Saskatchewan. You can send us your favorite picture on your phone right now by email to share at aptn.ca for the chance to be our next photo of the day. Now let's take a look at Friday's weather forecast. Starting on the east coast, 27 with showers in Halifax, 23 and rain in Fredericton. Rain in 13 for Kujuac, showers and 14 in Maine. Rain in 21 in Montreal, 18 with showers for Val d'Or. Sunny day in Sault Ste. Marie with a high of 21, showers in 19 in North Bay. Cloudy in 26 for Thunder Bay, Rain and 24 in Sioux Lookout. Sun's out, 25 in God's Lake, 28 for Norway House in the Paw. Sunny and 27 in Winnipeg and Brandon, one degree warmer in Dauphin. 26 with showers in Regina, rain and 28 in Saskatoon. Sunny and 27 for Meadow Lake, 28 in La Ronge. In northern Alberta, 30 in Fort Chip, 29 in Fort McMurray. 30 in Edmonton, showers and 25 for Lethbridge. 22 with rain in Vancouver, 30 in showers in Kamloops. 23 with rain in Prince George, 20 in rain in Smithers. 17 in Old Crow, Beaver Creek, and Whitehorse. 25 with rain in Yellowknife, rain and 21 in Norman Wells. 8 with showers in Saks Harbor, rain and 10 for Politech. 12 in Whale Cove, 10 in Baker Lake, 5 in Resolute, 6 in Joe Haven. Author Joshua Whitehead has a new book coming out following the incredible success of his last novel. Melissa Ridgen spoke with him earlier. Joshua, it's so great to see you. Tell us a little bit about the new book, Making Love to the Land. Yeah, it's been a, it's a long time coming. <laughs> Since about 2019, I've been working on it. Uh, it's a book of nonfiction um, that really details you know, being Indigenous, um, Cree primarily, um, Treaty 1 and Treaty 7 in Manitoba and in Calgary, uh, as well as mental health is the big kind of strong proponent of this book, of talking about it, thinking about it, and normalizing it in some as much as we can, anywho. Yeah. You know, it's been a wild five years for you. Three books, uh, plus your work at the University of Alberta. You know, has this, has the pace and this, all this national attention, attention um, been difficult? I mean, it seems like it would be a wait. Yeah, I think I'm a full-on Capricorn um, <laughs> and a workhorse, like born and bred from Manitoba. So I'm always continually busy. 
Um, now that I, you know, I have I have students that I teach, I keep saying like, don't publish three books in your PhD. Uh, use one for your dissertation. But it's been a wild ride. But again, it's all been very welcome. It's been a lot of fun, and I've got to meet and make a whole lot of community across Turtle Island. I love this. Uh, well, and do you feel that there's, you know, when you look back to where you started versus where we are now in that five years, has, is there more space or appreciation for two-spirit Indigenous voices uh, within Canadian literature than when you began? I think so. I think the landscape of, you know, what it means to be two-spirit and queer Indigenous and trans-Indigenous folks has been rapidly shifting. And I think, you know, we see that in, you know, the production of these books uh, and books winning awards like Jay Simpson, Ariel Twist, Billy Ray Belcourt, um, Kai Minaj Pyle, et cetera. And also the amazing television shows and the films we have now, like Prey um, and Reservation Dogs. So it's very hopeful, energizing to me. And it's been, it feels like it's been two days, but it's been five years. Yeah. Um, and it's been so rapidly shifting. I think there's been a lot of space made for two-spirit folks to come into the spotlight, tell their stories, and also you know, partake in community. What's next for you? I hate to ask that because you seem like you're busy enough that you shouldn't even be thinking ahead. You should just be thinking like one foot in front of the next. But I know people like you, workhorses, Capricorns, uh, are usually looking ahead and have, have something on the horizon. I have a continual five-year plan, I feel like. <laughs> I suspected. Um, so, <laughs> I'm teaching now. I finished my PhD last July and got hired um, almost immediately at the University of Calgary. So I'll be teaching in the English departments and international indigenous studies there, while also um, working on my next novel, again, this five-year plan. So I'm excited to return to the novel, though. No more nonfiction for me for a while. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're glad that you could join us today, and we look forward to the book when we can get our grubby little hands on it and to all the rest of the works that you have sitting on your to-do list. But in the meantime, try to grab some time for yourself and enjoy what's left of this summer, Joshua. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hi, hi. And we wish him success with the book. What has been a success, uh, Prey, the action-packed prequel to the Predator movie franchise, has been heralded for its indigenous cast, but it's also carved out a new record, according to Variety.com. You can't. I'm trying to protect you. Protect me from what? The entertainment magazine reports Sorry. Prey notched the most viewing hours ever on Hulu and Disney streaming services in the first three days of its release earlier this month. The film even dethroned the Kardashians, who set the record in April. Prey was filmed in Stony Nakoda territory in Alberta last summer, but in the film is set 300 years ago in Comanche territory, where a female warrior fights to save her people from a highly evolved alien predator. Prey earned accolades for Indigenous representation in a major movie and mostly favorable reviews with critics. You can watch Prey in Canada on Disney+. Plus. Disney Plus should release Reservation Dogs Season 2 to us as well. Uh, that's not coming till September 7th. That's all the time we have for your APTN National News for this Thursday. For news anytime or more on anything you've seen here, visit our website, aptnnews.ca. I'm Dennis Ward. Thanks for being with us. Have a great night.